Sinatra. Out of this. Out of this. Ah, uh -huh, it's out of whack. It's totally smashed in. This core support piece, we got a big gap. We'll see what this thing can do. What's up, man? I need to be able to get this bike in the back of this truck. There ain't no way you could do that safely. We can make it happen by building you a custom air suspension trailer. This is actually my first one to build, so no pressure. That is awesome, bro. I'm Bill Carlton. I built my first truck when I was 16. And ever since, me and my guys have been out here creating with our hands. Building the biggest, lowest, baddest custom trucks and cars in the game. People don't come here for what they need. They come here for what they want. This is Texas Metal. For the most part, we do client builds here at Extensive. But I've been looking for a nice project to build a Baja truck out of, maybe even make a few bucks on it at the end. You gotta start by buying it really, really low. My buddy Dave said he's got a truck for me that I have to come see. What's up, man? Hey! How deals in vehicles that he buys at auctions. Most are ready to drive off the lot. Some are just a little bit more than parts. When buying a vehicle like this, you have to do your due diligence. This is it? Yeah, that's it. It's hurt. It does look a little hurt. Yeah, it got hit hard. Hard. You yeah. wasn't playing. What happened with this truck? <laughs> they don't tell me what happened at the auction, but it just got wrecked. It's got low miles, though. Real low miles. What's real low miles? 633. Oh, man. Good rear end, good motor, transmission. Man, it looks good for parts. Man, still got the new car smell. Oh, yeah, she's new. Just don't got a new car look. Man, this interior is so new, we don't even have to do anything to it. You know, I was going to go ahead and salvage it, use the motor and transmission in one of my trucks. Oh, no, man, we can put this thing back together. You think so? This 2017 F-150 rolled off the factory floor with a 5.0 liter Coyote V8 engine. It's the perfect starting platform for what I want to build. I mean, you can see the bed's still straight with a the cab. There's nothing wrong with the back of the frame. It's just the front. Man, I'm seeing making this thing into a Baja truck. A Baja truck? Really? We'll make this thing so we can, we can jump it. Jump it? <laughs> yeah, man. Man, this thing is missing a lot, Bill. Well, that's where you come in, buddy. Bill's not the kind of guy to scare eat Bill, but this one needs a ton of parts and fixes. And on our dollar, that's what really scares me. Man, I didn't know we were picking it up to build. I thought this was <laughs> the parts. Yeah, that's what I admire a lot about Bill. He always sees things that other people don't. It is brand new, Bill, but it's in pretty bad shape. That means it's cheap for me, right? Yeah, we can run a special. <laughs> we always do. Man, we're gonna get it running. And you can come check it out, man. You can be there when it happens. I'd like to be there. Let me know. I trust you, but do you really want to take this pile home? Come on, man, of course. Yep. Most of the time, you should just strip a truck like this for parts, but I've been doing this a long time. You see the right truck? It's endless possibilities. We're going to turn a pile of thin up crap into something that's it's going to be really cool, man. I've been wanting to build a Baja pre-runner style truck for a while street legal truck you can race and jump this truck is a perfect candidate for it this is gonna be fun man we're gonna jump this thing we gotta launch it by launch so how high are you talking i mean at least this high <laughs> yep. any terrain it can possibly go through sand mud gravel that's what a truck like this is built for. Just the aggressive stance. You look at it, it just looks pissed off. It's in bad shape. I mean, you see, that's immediately what you see. To me, half of it's here. That's a head start. What better way to get a truck like this, very little money, and turn it into something really cool and able to jump up into the air? Well, Timmy, here she is. What are we doing with this? Take the motor out, trans out, wheels, tires off. A couple doors look good. Come on, man. I'm gonna build a Baja truck. Out of this. Out of this. The truck is brand new. And on this, we're gonna have a little bit higher ground clearance in the front than the rear to go off-road, to jump things, and still be able to drive it on the street every day. 
big wide fenders to go along with the long travel suspension. You gotta have the long travel suspension so the control arms and everything have to be really long to, to be able to jump. Wide bed sides in the back just for that aggressive look. Bed cage in the back, big huge shocks. We're gonna give this thing a second life and even better than it ever rolled off the assembly line. Spares in the back, we want the whole Baja look in your life. So you're gonna drive like Bill, and we're gonna drive it to the max. <laughs> Anything we fix after that is road worthy 100% because you drive Hell yeah. 200% worse than anybody I know. Or nothing breaks, we'll just keep it as a shop truck. Take the lunch every day. Lunch, Bill's credit card for gas. Uh -uh. <laughs> no? I'll sell it then. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's gonna sell it when he finishes it. I'll believe it when I see it. Looking at this truck, you can tell it got hit really hard in the front passenger side. And it's obvious we're gonna replace body panels. But man, we need to tear this thing down and see what kind of frame damage there is. The back's good. I don't have any concern at all with this. Let's get the front of this thing all tore apart. Front end looks a little bit jacked up. You wouldn't even <laughs> call it a front end. <laughs> it's like somebody had already started repairing it. I've seen it all wrapped up. Now I see it got hit way harder than I thought it did. Man, the whole throttle body's missing. Probably gonna but, need a new one anyways. Get some power. Well, let's get it tore apart, man. Let's see what else. Let's see what else we need. Dang. See the little charcoal canisters totally busted. The deep gouge in the cross member. Gouge in the transmission pan. The front of the frame is totally out of whack. You can tell somebody's already tried to repair it. I'm nervous about how the uncompleted repair job is done. Hopefully from the point they repaired, back is all good. But we won't know anything until we run the string line and go from there. We're going old school to measure the straightness of the frame. You know, plumb bob's just a tool of just knowing if you have a straight line or not. Sometimes you don't have a point you can just run a tape measure right off of. So if you drop a plumb bob, which is just a weighted string, that gives you a perfectly level string to measure off of. So you can measure from each side of the frame to the plumb bob to know if you're perfectly centered on that. If it lines up with your horizontal string, you know you're right on the money. I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty out of whack. Offline eight. At the same time, we'll level this thing. So the level will tell us if it's out of whack this way, and the string line will tell us if everything's completely straight that way. We can go up a little bit on passenger side. Pretty good. Check out that front front. Ah, it's out of whack. Make it level. Let me see how far off it is. We tweaked a little bit. It's a little off center. We want this thing to drive perfectly straight down the road. We want everything 100% in line, no alignment issues. We don't want it pulling off the one side or another. We're gonna be abusing this thing. Well, I am. We're gonna put it to the test, so I wanna make sure everything's gonna hold up to what we're gonna throw at it. First thing we need to do on the F-150 is repair the frame. It's not just the damage from the accident, but the bad repair job. Elu's gonna cut that out. We're gonna start all over. Down. Okay, up just a hair. All right, perfect. Elu's got all this cut loose. It lines up perfect with our string line. Plum Bob is 100%. It's perfectly level. Last step is just weld this thing up. Man, Lulu, that looks, that looks real good, man. Can't even tell anything ever even happened to it. It's just not the frame needs to be fixed, but the whole passenger side core support was damaged in the accident. So Rudy's gonna pull off the bad piece and install a new one. This F-150 has been in a real bad accident. So what we found was this core support piece, it should be nice and straight here and then curve out. But if, as you can tell, we put a straight edge here on the straight part, we got a big gap here. So a little gap here is gonna create an even bigger gap here on the end. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this piece out, bring in a new piece, it's nice and straight. 
And that way, when our fenders go on, they shoot both up nice and perfect. So the core support is the structural frame of the front end. Our headlights, radiator, grill, bumper, all that bolts up to the core support. So it needs to be nice and straight for everything to fit perfect. We got our new core support fender piece in. As you can see, this one's nice and straight. So we'll go ahead and bolt it all up. And after that, we'll be good to go. As much as anything else, I think we're in the problem-solving business. And today, Chad and Melinda, they got a good one for us. They own a local bar and restaurant, and they build their own custom bikes, and they paint everything orange. I mean, every What's going on, buddy? How are you? Good, man. I've known Bill for about 15 years. One of the first trucks that I ever worked on, Bill did the air ride suspension on it for me. What you got here? Is this new one you build? Yeah. Yeah, we got it done not too long ago. It's a 08 Road King that we built. Put the 30-inch front wheel on it, fully bagged it out. Of course, our orange color on it. Man, it looks good. Thank you. But we're having a little issue. I need to be able to get this bike in the back of this truck. So I need to come up with some type of ramp system, some kind of mechanism that'll fold out, no. something. <laughs> Man, come on. You can't be... Mm -mm. There ain't no way you could do that safely. Got to figure out a way to get it hauled around, though. We can make it happen by building you a custom air suspension trailer. It can drop completely flat on the ground. You can ride this bike right up on it, strap it down. Easy and safe. A custom trailer? A that custom. sounds expensive. <laughs> What's expensive is dropping this off of a ramp coming out of the back of this truck sure. or hurting yourself. Bill's vision is just different than anybody else's. When it comes to metal work, he's a true artist. My thing is, of course, is go with the orange theme. Everything's got to match. Hell yeah. We can powder coat it orange, no problem. Put some black wheels on it. Make everything flow and match and look totally custom. You good with that? Yeah, let's do it. Cool, man. Let's Something go right up. up. Let's get you going, man. You can't be having no ramp. Come on. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Back in 2000, you know, I had an idea for an air suspension motorcycle trailer that is set completely flat on the ground. I had a bike, didn't have a truck at the time, so problem solved, air suspension trailer. You know, a lot of people just see a steel rack, but when you have a steel rack, it's endless possibilities what you can build. Anybody that's ever put a motorcycle in back of a truck, they know how sketchy it is and how dangerous and how much it's gonna cost to fix something when you have an accident, so. I mean, this just solves all the problems. Just makes it super easy. Ride the bike right up on it, strap it down, air it up, and you're on your way. Jamie's one of our best fabricators and a biker himself, so he's going to help me build this trailer. Thanks, man. Each and every one of these trailers start out on the same template. But we customize each one depending on the style and size of the bike. And you know this one, it's got to be orange. So there's a lot of tube on this trailer. It's probably about maybe close to 60 foot. So everything needs to be cut exactly. There's a lot of angles on this trailer. If I get one of them wrong, it could look crooked. It could not be the same on each side. I need to ditto each side and make everything perfect to the jig. So it's really important all my cuts fit nicely. This is actually my first one to build, so no pressure. Me and Jamie worked late into the night to make this custom trailer for Chad and Melinda. The frame is mostly welded up. Now it's time for the airbags. Jamie cut one of two suspension links, so we're gonna put this bar through it and then it's gonna pivot on the bolt. This is actually gonna be the suspension to the trailer. So you see there's no traditional trailer axle going all the way through it. The spindle of the wheel is gonna be right here mounted. We're gonna trim it all down so the fender will weld right to it, but that's it. This thing's all done, it's gonna be years and years of trouble-free towing. Hell yeah. Tack it. 
All right, cool. Hell yeah. This is the same basic system we use on our cars and our trucks. And you can see when you put air in this, as soon as you hit a switch, the valve opens, air goes right into the bag, lifts the arm up, trailer raises. So that's basically the whole suspension in this thing. Now to fit the big wheels. Yeah. Get that up there, a few quick measurements, and start wrapping it up. You know, we don't have a fixture for this, so every one of these are custom to the wheel, the tire, everything varies on this. So we build everything one off, and you see the links we go to to make sure everything looks 100% straight. Jump up, measure that real quick. Nobody's gonna notice if it's 100% perfect, but they're damn sure gonna notice if it's crooked. Man, that's perfect. That's what I'm talking about. Now that the frame is straight, we're gonna install a long travel suspension on this F-150, which is specially designed for the pre-runners. Knowing Bill, I know he's gonna drive long, strong, and sturdy, which they are. It's gonna be perfect for giving us that suspension travel to make sure we don't roll this thing over. It's the last thing this truck wants to do. We're installing the coilovers and shock. A coilover is a shock and spring compact into one unit. This allows adjustment for your height and stiffness of the ride to fit your personal preference. Of course, Bill's gonna go with the biggest shock he can. He needs the biggest shock to have the softest landing. Push it down at the same time. The shocks keep the truck from bouncing, so it sticks to the road better, no matter how bumpy the road gets. We got our whole setup here installed. Our spindle, our lower control arm, upper control arm, our coilovers, and our shocks. Our wheel is gonna stick out pretty far out from the body due to our longer control arms. Give us a little bit more travel on our suspension. As much travel as we can get, the better for us. Now, Elu and Rudy are installing the brakes. This thing is gonna take a beating. It's very important to have super strong stainless steel brake lines. We don't want the line getting kinked up or ripped up because if the brake line breaks loose and gets cut, this thing ain't stopping. We, we really need this brake line to work. Elu is installing the limiting strap. The limiting strap keeps, it just won't overextend and get all in a bind. Now that I have all the limited strap mounted and the brake line mounted, well, the next step is to mount these reservoirs that are just hanging out right now, but we're gonna fasten them down for whenever he's up in the air, they won't be all over the place. That's in, that's perfect. The frame on this F-150 is good as new. To turn this thing into a pre-runner, we're gonna add some reinforcements. I mean, 4,000 pound truck laying in nose first, you know, it's gonna take a beating. So when to build a brace goes from tower to tower. So when we jump this thing, the tower just don't fold in. They're so tall and that's, that's a ton of leverage coming down. Drop. Sounds good. We'll roll a piece, an inch and a half, schedule 80, something real heavy, and so then we'll bend it. So it gives a nice little contour, little style to it. All right. All right, man, let me get my little notepad out here. A nine and seven eighths. I roll it and we'll just lay it out on the table. I just want a little bit of... So going off the little quick, simple sketch and the measurements that took off the truck, I'm just transferring it over onto a piece of paper so it's actual size. It's got a slight little angle to it. Put my angle in the old computer here. As long as I transferred my measurements to my paper, correct, it should fit perfect. First time. Should. This machine uses a hydraulic piston to force a precise bend into our pipes. I say that's it. Now we just gotta cut it. We got our marks. Next step, chop it up, put it on. It's gonna fit Lulu. Wow, we find out in a minute. We set it down. Man, that'll work. You know, with this being bent so much, it makes it weak here. 
When you bend a pipe, it weakens it a little, so I'm gonna double it up and make this thing super strong. Let's bend one more. We'll kind of lean them apart and we'll have extra strength, man, for jumping. Oh yeah, it'll be a lot stronger. Man, that thing's gonna be super strong, Lulu. That's never gonna fold up on us. Then we get Rudy to cut us a little extensive badge to go right in the middle of this, man, to hold all this together. It'll be pretty tight. The engine brace for the F-150 is almost ready. Rudy's burning out a plate so we can tie this thing all together, and it's gonna be super strong. All ready to go. Go ahead and hand it off to Bill. You can go ahead and weld it on the Baja truck. Ooh. How's that look? Man, that looks good, Rudy. Tack this thing in. We're just gonna pull this thing off. Take it over the table, weld it up. This is one of the things that nobody's ever gonna see, but I know it's there. Every part and piece of this is done right. Not just. That's how we did. We'll all welded up, ready to go with the powder coater. Because we're turning this truck into a Baja style pre runner, it has longer front suspension underwells. So I'm having Charlie and Fernando modify the fenders and the bedsides to make this thing all fit. Being that Bill wants to jump this thing, we need to make sure we've got a ton of clearance in here. So that way that when he does jump, there is clearance and the tires don't hit the inner wheel wells and he doesn't have a problem with that. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna drill out all the rivets that they have in here holding this out and then we'll remove this outer shell. And then once we remove that, we'll trim it all off and we'll use a piece of this to actually keep it extended out and then we'll build our own wheel well and make it all uniform. This piece is already all mocked in of where we, where we think we want it at. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the fiberglass bedside in and double check everything, check our measurements, make sure they're all good to go so we can continue on with the rest of the form of the fender weld. Looking in here, you can see how we made everything mount to the factory edge. So when you look at it all in one piece, it just, everything flows in like if it was made that way. You know, once we, once we get it all mounted and attached to there, you ain't gonna know that we ever even did this. Which way are we going? All right, thanks guys. Appreciate it, man. Charlie's laying out the fiberglass mat to mend this thing all together. It's gonna be super strong and super light. With body filler, so it's gonna be super smooth for paint. And we just got this thing back from powder coat. Everything looks good as it always does. Chad is gonna be ecstatic. It, it matches with everything in his collection. So it's gonna put everything in this tongue box. All the essentials to make this thing work is all right here. Cool, well we got so far, obviously the battery, air compressor, and three sets of valves. So we have a valve for the tongue, a valve for the left, a valve for the right. No matter what the load is, if it's the offset load, you can add a little more pressure to the left. Or if you got a little more weight on the right, you add a little more pressure to the right. Ready for that tank. Yeah. Cool, we got everything mounted in place. Only thing left to do is just wiring and run some lines. That's it. Motorcycle ride every Sunday. They're gonna be showing up here any minute to his new bar. So I figure what better place to give him his trailer. Wow. That's freaking that awesome. awesome. Man, damn bro, that's God, that's freaking <laughs> sick. I didn't even imagine this, bro. That's over the top. Oh, so good. That is insane. So you gotta have the orange and black, I know. Man, you know I wouldn't accept it if it wasn't. <laughs> so it's perfect. It's full air suspension. Okay. Of course, 
You know, it has three bags. It has a bag on each wheel and a bag on the tongue. And so you can leave this thing hooked up to any vehicle and drop this thing completely flat. So it's super stable. You know, you ride your bike right up on it, strap it down, air it up, you're good to go. It doesn't get much better than that, bro. Yeah, man. When we talked about doing something like this, that's why we went to Bill. You know, I knew he'd come up with something that would work perfect for us. And just the fact that he can, you know, build something out of nothing is amazing. Check it out. Let me show you how to work this thing. Yeah. Let's check this thing out. Everything's inside here. All the switches. You see the tank, presser, valving, everything is all in here. Hit the two switches, air the back up. That's freaking awesome. That is awesome, bro. Man, that's insane. You weren't insane. expecting that, were you? No, not at all. When Bill hit the French beat, three different, that. yeah, three different bags, three different switches, you know, all fully adjustable. Uh, to be able to work behind any vehicle that we pull it behind is going to be really cool. Definitely feel safe putting my bike on it. <laughs> and the last thing to see is how it fits on the trailer. Yeah, hopefully it fits. There you go. Wow. Man, that's insane. Man, it fits. When Chad rode that bike up on the trailer, it's obvious. It's 100% package complete now. Perfect match. Bro, that's insane. That looks really good. Man, this is way better than ramps, huh? Yeah, for sure. And cooler. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely cooler. It, it definitely flows. Put this thing awesome. up, man. See how it picks oh, yeah. it up. Made voyage. Oh, wow. So good, you got that. Ready to go. Yeah, this looks really good. The bike, the trailer, the truck. You did a fantastic job. That's awesome, bro. I am so happy that we had Bill build this for us. It just looks amazing, and I'm super excited to get it out on the road. Now that the front suspension's all installed on the Baja, it's time to get... Make sure the truck don't go forward. You good? Go. Oh. We gotta remove the factory leaf springs, but everything's in the way. The gas tank is coming off, and we're moving the exhaust just to get to that one bolt to get the springs out. You're good. This is our factory leaf spring. And this is our new spring we got right now. You can see the difference. One's way thicker than the other one. Our new leaf springs packed with a whole lot more leaves for better absorption, whereas our factory one only has about three. So this one's pretty much made for potholes, and this one's made for big-ass jumps. And now we got the leaf springs on. We're gonna go ahead and throw the rear end on there and bolt it up. Whoa. All right, hold up. Get that side fastened down. We got the U-bolt plates. Hang on for a second, Rudy. When you're down on your luck, just hang in there. Then hook them brake lines up. We'll bring the cage in. All we need to do now is install the shocks, new wheels and tires, and it's ready for a test run. Rudy and Elu are all done installing the rear leaf springs on the Baja F-150. I love how this thing's turning out. With the big shock, 16 inches of travel, you know, attached to the new long travel leaf springs. I can't wait to get the big wide fenders on it and go test this thing out. Matter of fact, we'll put the wheels on it, go we'll see what this thing will do. The stock tires just aren't gonna cut it. So we're replacing it with 37 inch high performance off-road tires. I really want to see how the suspension does, how it reacts when it hits bumps and dips. And there's all kind of little fine tuning tricks that you can do to this type of suspension. But, you know, don't know till you really put your foot to the floor and see what kind of reaction you get out of the truck itself. When you're upgrading this suspension, you're, you're putting bigger tires on it. You know, it's always a concern for not enough power. I call this the spot test. That was fun. 
man, overall, you know, it was a good run. I mean, there's definitely some tuning on the shocks, but we gotta get this thing up in the air, at least over spot. I mean, it shouldn't be very hard to do. We need a lot more power and a lot bigger jump. When I get back, I'm calling Justin and put me one bad turbo system on here, man. What's up, man? What's up, Mr. Carlton? So I want to launch this thing, and it just don't have the power to do what we need to do. Well, good thing you got this Coyote motor, man. These 5.0s are good platforms. We can do a single turbo, something that'll come in, hit hard, Hell hit yeah. like nitrous, man, and be good for this pre-runner build. If everything works like it's supposed to, you can see about uh, 20 horsepower per pound of boost. It'll be enough for Bill. You know Bill, you know telling. <laughs> What's the plan? What we can do is we can use the factory flanges and we can build from those flanges. Yeah. Since we're going to tie into the factory manifolds, it's easier just to go ahead and use the factory OEM flanges and build from this point forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut these off and we're going to try to save it where we can use these O2 bones so we can use the factory flanges. And Matt, this one should be ready, man. This is a good start. I'm gonna start working on the hot side, which is everything on the turbine side of the their turbocharger. Buddy Matt, he's gonna start on the cold side, which is like the intake and the discharge off the compressor housing. The hot side of this turbo kit is what feeds the turbine wheel. That's where I guess the magic happens. The air comes in and it pressures it up, pushes it out to the intake manifold. A turbocharger is basically an air pump. It forces more air into the engine. You get more air, you get more power. This thing should spool really, really fast with the dual inlets feeding off of each bank of this five liter Coyote motor. So now we've got the turbocharger bolted in. We're gonna go ahead and start connecting to our intercooler. Matt's trying to install the intercooler on the F-150, but it just won't fit. The end tanks were kind of hitting on the inside of the frame rails. So we went ahead and we cut them to pieces so we can go ahead and put our inlets on our intercooler. After we cut it, the coupler that slides on there, it'll want to blow off. So we put a little bead around it to keep it from, from coming off. I'm gonna cut it on the saw and then make our bend. Now that we have our end cap tacked into place, we got two more plates that we need to make and then we can go ahead and weld this side out. Now that we have our end tanks modified on our intercooler where it fits in between the frame rails, we're gonna go ahead and get it installed now. It looks like it was made to be there. We're gonna give it a once over. We still gotta run our oil supply line, our drain line. We got a couple fittings that we need to install. This is our downpipe on the exhaust side and we're gonna finish running it out. Once we get the fenders on, we'll know exactly where we need to go with it. Charlie and Tim are finishing up the body modifications on the front of this Baja. I'm set the fenders up here and rough them in, see what we got. Yeah. With way wider fenders and a fiberglass hood. Right now, I'm making sure that the fiberglass fender doesn't hit none of the original mounts or on the cab or anything like that, so we're gonna see how we look. Boy, look at that. That's 100% better right there. Let's grab the hood. Let's do it. Let's see we go. <laughs> this thing is going to be a beast. Yeah, it's going to look real cool. My dad always told me that when I was little, I loved getting those little die cast.
part we had to put together. He would buy me one and then he would see me put it together and then he'd see me taking it apart and then putting it together again. It was always a fascination in tearing apart vehicles and building something better than what we already had. Our biggest tool and one of my favorite tools is our plasma cutter. Before, there was plenty of parts that we would have to do hands-on, whereas now, the computer does it all on its own, and within an hour, I have double of what I would do before. Bill hates computers, and, and to me, computers is one of the biggest things I like to use. When we first got the machine, nobody really knew how to run it or who was going to run it, and I asked him, I was like, hey, so who, who's going to do it? And he just kind of like looked at me, he was like, well, who else? Working with Bill, he does have high expectations for everybody, which is a good thing. He doesn't want anybody else to fail, because the way I see it is if we fail, then he fails. So, of course, he's going to want us. He always wants it done in two minutes. So. <laughs>
vertical down low, raising one up high, or jumping one through the air. You gotta have a good team. And I got some of the best around. I can't thank my guys enough. Bad. Hey, yes. uh, uh, he's here now. <laughs> you got this, you got it. Hell yeah. Man, that's gonna work. I told you. I told you. I know, I know. Yeah. Hey, Bill, I, I gotta tell you, I never thought you'd have pulled that off. Man, that truck was hit hard. You made it come out good. I really like that thing back. You think we can do something around 75? Oh, man, come on. That thing's still too new, man. I need a little bit of time. I tell you what, a couple months, maybe. Yo, let the new wear off. I'll give you first choice, man, when, first when it comes time. I'm interested. Let me know. All right. I wasn't planning on selling this truck today, but, you know, after I'm done playing with it, it's good to know I got a buyer lined up.